What is a common pitfall that you see hardware startups experience? <laughs> oh, geez. Name them in the chat, people. Name the common pitfalls <laughs> that you see hardware startups. R right off the bat, well, one would be cash flow, right? But, you know, assuming that's not a problem. The other is to think that it, the other is not to pivot. When, you, when your idea turns out to be stupid or not practical or, or the market shifted or something else, then you don't pivot. You just keep going through with your fundamentally impractical, stupid idea. But then again, I'm just attacking the ones that are fundamentally impractical and stupid. Um, but no, people just get their blinkers on and they think that um, we we talked about this the uh, actually on the Amp Hour, and we kind of discussed this in that um, there's a new hardware startup once again, another online PCB schematic. Uh, tool that's mainly geared towards actual collaboration between engineers, right? It's you know, and and their whole pitch. I can't remember the name of them. Uh, uh, Flux, Flux is their name. <laughs> anyway, uh, avoid uh, all links. Uh, Temco batteries in Minnesota. Browser-based des hardware design tool Flux. Right? They they raised twelve million dollars, right? And. Uh, the thing with this is, right, yeah, go and watch their video, right? They've got like a really wanky video and it's all about how, you know, you I don't... I want you to imagine something. A better way to make <laughs> hardware without any obstacles. Let's go through it. Idea and the finished product. It's called Flux. It exists because the old way to work... How do you even get a trademark on that? Every step of the process. You can't. Planning, researching, prototyping, testing is slow and expensive, too easy to make errors, and every error costs time and money. Yep. Meanwhile, you work in a silo on You're your own. You work in a silo Building on your own. hardware is not something you do alone. Yes, it is. It's best done with a team. <laughs> so Flux gives your team a shared space to work. You can invite them to collaborate with you in real wow. time. And they can add to the conversation at any point in wow. the process. Wow, so you can just highlight Tasks a schematic. Tasks that used like... to slow you down, like wiring components together, in Flux, they're automated. There's also a simulator that lets you test your circuits before prototyping. Flux is all about sharing ideas and resources like engineers always have. It's based on a rich culture of openness and collaboration that accelerated innovation and launched a revolution in computing. Today, Give me your we thoughts. can draw from the innovations of the past to construct the future. This is a better way to build. This is Flux. This is Flux. <laughs> right? There you go. You can see why, hopefully, you can see why uh, Chris and I were kind of like, yeah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> as we say here in Australia, yeah, nah. I don't think they fundamentally understand the hardware design process. And uh, Chris said he sees this a lot in, like, you know, when software people try and do hardware, they bring the software mindset in, and it just, it, it, it doesn't work. Um, no, like, you don't have teams of people collaborating at the schematic level. Like, yeah, maybe on giant projects, you might have somebody design a part of a schematic, another part, but you know, generally, no, you, where, where the collaboration happens is at the product level. But even then, like at the, you know, figuring out the user interface and the form factor and the specs and, you know, everything else, there's a bit of collaboration that goes on there. But ultimately, you want someone to make a decision, right? And once somebody's made that decision and they've got the specs, then it's, it's up to a lone hardware engineer to lock themselves away in their solo, silo, in their basement, right? And, and produce the schematic and then maybe you'll have another person who does the board perhaps right or it or it could be the same person and then you can get all this collaborative feedback anyway it's called a design review meeting and you can do it with a pdf right here's the pdf of the schematic give it to everyone and go well give us your thoughts right it, it it's like how does this online design tool of people is you know you've got all these people like as if you're going to have all these people live as if any engineer wants all these people live as they're doing the schematic tell or leaving little notes and going oh why did you put this bypass cap in it's piss off right <laughs> it's like <laughs> no no am i wrong am i wrong i'm going to load lo load the comments down here right who agrees with myself and dave that they've kind of that i uh, i don't think they fundamentally understand the process here
I think this is a good example of where, yep, they've got all the dollars and the tool looks very schmick, I'm sure, and oh, it automatically places schematic components and routes them or something. Oh, come on, that's never going to work, right? Yeah, it, it's another online sub EDA. <laughs> yeah, it's another uh, Gen X shit, <laughs> says George. <laughs> George says Gen X shit. Uh, <laughs> another online. Everyone give me a. Th it's <laughs> It, it sounds fluffed. Does everyone, yes, yeah, someone agrees. I agree. I agree. Everyone agrees. 100% agree. All right, a big company that manufactures a graphic card does have many people who design the PCB. Yeah, probably, maybe. You know, I, I, I have worked on with more than one person working on the PCB layout, but more, more often than not, no. You know, it's, um, no. Nope. But yeah, you would have it in the maybe the schematic side, you know, it depends on how complicated it is. But really, it's not, you know, they, they think that this applies to everything. You know, they're, they're little Internet of Things widget. No. Uh, Altium, Altium did do something similar. When, when, when I was at Altium, that's when they got the idea for the design uh, collaboration thing. And they actually forced us hardware group to use it. Um, and we hated it. It was it was crap. It was pointless. And we told them that. And I think they eventually dropped it. I I think it might be in the new one. It has some, um, you know, it has some uh, tools like that. But it's marketing BS. Woke <laughs> woke crap says Dita. <laughs> What does Def Palm say? I collaborate with a group of people with product and mold design using CAD, of course. We all individually review it and look for potential issues. Yes, but you don't need like this live online collaboration thing to do it. It's like, you know, generally somebody does your CAD, you send it, you send them the CAD files and other people comment, right? And then there's a little bit of back and forth and then you come up with a, you know, it's not some, you know, huge thing that needs a solution. I, uh, I understand your points, someone doesn't agree, but also flux their points. Right, yeah, uh, but I don't, I think they're overestimating how many people need this. Right, I'm 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 not saying it's useless. Right, I, there are definite reasons that this is going to right. It, it's going to work, but I think yeah, and that's another thing for the original question. How this all started, the startup thing. What mistakes do startups make? This is another one. Overestimating your market. You think everyone's going to love this? No, no. Right, engineers aren't going to see this. Right, regular hardware design engineers, which we are. Right. We're, we're, we're not going to see this video and go, oh, I've got to have that. That solved all my problems. Well, no, right? There's going to be 1% of people who solved all the problems. Altium had the same problem, right, with their vision for, um, you know, turning the world of electronics design upside down. Everything FPGAs, right? Everything. You won't need to like, literally, this was Altium's vision, right, back in 2006 or something. Um, you will you will never need to design PCBs again, right? You would hardly anyone, hardly anyone will have to design a custom PCB uh, like like from scratch because it'll all be modular. Why design your power supply? Why why lay out a power supply circuit when you know everyone's done already done it, right? And you just pull it in, you pull it in, you pull it in. It's all modular. Boop! It just magically happens. Oompa loopers. Just magically do it, right? It's it no, no, right? And it flopped, and it absolutely flopped. And this thing, the yes, it's going to have a niche. You know, some people think it's oh, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. It solves my problems. Great, fantastic for you. Okay, I'm not saying the problem uh, it shouldn't exist. I reckon that they're making the mistake thinking that everyone's going to want this. They don't. I think this would be a great tool. There you go. EV3 thinks it'd be great. <laughs> It can flux off. You know, look, I'm, yeah, I'm not saying it's, but I think this is a classic case of them overestimating the market for this. And and their investors too. <laughs> you should have called it fluff. Who, <laughs> who takes responsibility for it? Yeah. Modular PCB assumes no physical design constraints. It's not likely to be ever practical. Yeah, it's, it's never going to be practical. I can remember back in the old days of the Oz Electronics, or was it Psy Electronics Design Usenet groups, I can remember having a huge multi, like a month long <laughs> uh, debate with someone on there about the ability. And then we took it offline, I think. I think that we, and then we were like emailing each other and stuff. And like, and like I spent, 
you know, in inordinate amount of time trying to convince this dude who was so serious. I think he actually wanted to go into business with me at one point. Was it? Is that he, yeah, he had this uh, grand vision for modular electronics. And, you know, you would never, it was the same thing, but this was back in like the 90s. And th this modular thing. And I, and no, I had to shoot it. Like everything he came up with, I had a counter for why this was not going to be a thing. And it, it, it went on for months. <laughs> it went on for a long time. And he finally just gave up, I think. Um, and, and yeah, and it never happened. I was right back then. And I'm still going to be right that that's never going to be a thing. It looks good and you miss the point. Not engineers are choosing what is used in a project. <laughs> yeah, well, your company's going to fail. So good luck with that. How do you properly gauge market? Well, <laughs> you've got to have an intimate knowledge. Like I know the hobby market, for example. I've been in that for 30 plus years, right? So I, I, I think the spidey sense being involved in the market is how you properly gauge it i don't know you like you can't do surveys like you know i i don't know it's it's hard um you've got to have someone with a good spidey sense in that market just just believing in your products not enough and and i think that that's what flux have made the problem here i think is that they haven't properly gauged they they've overestimated their market i think and they've over, overestimated the need for a, a a schematic piece of B, um, you know, tool where everyone collaborates together. But like, this is already available, and it's not like it's not or, or, or already available. So I, I don't know what they're offering, really. Um, you know, you can do this same thing. Like, you can do live uh, cross pro. Altium has it. Um, I think. Does KeyCAD have it? I'm, I'm not sure. Do the other tools have it? But, you know, like you can get in there and you can leave notes and you can like, or you just do it as a PDF or whatever, you know, and you mark it up and you, it's not like, I don't see the value in it. I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing it. And then it just becomes yet another CAD tool, right? That people have to be, you know, that you have to commit. And it, and it, it also, they also have probably have no idea of the entrenchment of CAD tools in people's mindset and market, right? Uh, it's just, yeah, <laughs> it's that people don't want to move from the CAD tool. Like they, they don't want to take up, magically take up this new online tool, right? That, that no one in the industry uses. It's a, oh yeah, well, I do wish them luck, but I, I think they're, yeah, I think they've missed the mark. It, it doesn't look like they do anything new. Yeah, I, I don't see what they're doing new. They talk about people collaboration. They talk, they mention briefly about the schematic, like automatically, like you just dropped in the block and you saw it route. Like, okay, but you've got to set those, you, that just doesn't magically happen. You've got to set that up, right? You've, it's like auto routing. Auto routing doesn't work unless you set it up first. You've got to put almost more work into setting, well, you do have to put more work into setting up the auto router before you actually route, right? It's it, it's just, I don't, yeah, I don't, and it's it, it's all, no, nah, no. Nah. And it's aimed at small stuff, like it's not aimed at huge stuff. So it's like, you know, why do you need, if you got something small, why, why do you need, I don't know why you need this. I don't know, I don't, yeah. Please tell me if I'm wrong. Can can you save your project offline? <laughs> yeah.